Good evening, board members. My name is Nicole Grantham, and I'm the CEO of O Wells Exploration. O Wells Exploration was named such due to our agility in responding to market conditions. When market fundamentals change, O Wells, our fantastic management team, will figure out how to respond appropriately. I'll be guiding you through today's presentation. First, we'll be hearing from Matt Zeiss, our VP of Exploration. Matt's responsible for all of our drilling strategies. Next, we'll be hearing from Sophie Ewalt, our VP of Risk. Sophie is responsible for maintaining our risk management and hedging structures. Next, we'll hear from Lydia Brantley, our CFO. Lydia is responsible for communicating the corporate strategy and ensuring that the risk management approach is consistent with our corporate strategy. Next, I will hand it off to Matt Zeiss, who will be speaking to you about exploration. Okay, thank you, Nicole. My name is Matt Zeiss, I'm the VP of Drilling, Ex Drilling Operations, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our group's decision-making process. We developed a process where each member would look at the economic scenarios for the next year and develop a plan on our own uh, based on from the perspective of our individual roles. We would then come together and debate the plans, uh, weight the merits and pitfalls of each plan, and come up with the best plan or hybrid of plans to implement for the next year. This allowed us to validate and test all of our assumptions and come up with the best plan for the economic conditions. Uh, we believe we performed very well and we look forward to our next project. Back to you, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Next, we'll be speaking with Sophie Ewalt, our VP of Risk Management, who will be talking about defining performance and risk mitigation. Sophie? Thank you, Nicole. O. Wells decided very early on that a disciplined capital program allowed for the preservation of cash in preparation for a potential downturn. This proved critical in our success. Being relatively conservative in 2017 and paid off in 2018, prices decreased drastically. In doing this, we focused on maximizing the net present value of the project without spending capital at diminishing returns. While we could have run two rigs in each basin, we simply did not achieve the best MPV bang for the buck. So, in 2017, we ran two rigs in our most economic basin of the time, the Haynesville, and chose to only run one rig in each of the other basins. We were extremely happy with this decision in 2018 as the conserved cash got us through the price slump of 2018 where we held on with one rig in the Woodford. In 2019, we had the option of taking on a $100 million RBL at 6%, or to take on $300 million of MES at 10% and a 5% net profits interest carve out. We elected to take on the RBL because we thought prices would improve in the future, and we wanted to ensure that the future cash flows were as high as possible. We did not accept the MES debt offer because the MPI negatively impacted NPV and ROI for our investors. Our disciplined approach to capital spend in the beginning allowed us to be in control of our capital structure and take on the less expensive RBL. Again, we looked at diminishing returns with CapEx spend and settled on running two rigs in the Marcellus, one rig in the Haynesville, and three rigs in the Woodford in 2018. We considered overall cost of capital but focused mostly on ROI. Our selected plan allowed us to achieve value creation without drawing down on our equity beyond $174 million of the $300 million potential commitment. We forecasted that we would be able to easily repay the RBL within three years, which means we would be able to offer relatively unencumbered assets to the market with more value achieved for the company and our investors. Thank you. Nicole? Thank you, Sophie. Now we'll be speaking with our CFO, Lydia Brantley, who is currently in Washington, D.C., speaking with government officials about our next project in Mexico. Lydia? Thanks. As a company, we prioritize return on investment, ROI, over net present value, and PV, so pursued a more conservative drilling schedule. When presented with the option to take mezzanine debt or a reserve-based lending agreement, RBL, we chose the latter. The net profit interest carve-out required with the MES debt option meant we would only deliver $1.66 billion to our investors despite the $1.84 billion generated in MPV. We chose to be conservative and return as much value to our investors while limiting leverage concerns. Our plan for 2020 is a straight asset sale, running one rig in the Marcellus, two in the Haynesville, and three in the Woodford. We believe a fair price would be $1.67 billion, which would mean an ROI of 9.22 after debt repayment. Thank you, Lydia. 
As you can see, with measured and well thought out moves in the market, our management team has delivered significant returns on investment, and we hope that you'll be willing to invest with us on our upcoming projects. Thank you.